Good morning, Westminster family. It's good to greet you on a Friday here in June. We're so excited to be together for worship this coming Sunday. I want to start with just a couple of updates for you. First of all, as we look at this Sunday, we have made one change. Uh, our registrations have been a bit lower than uh, the survey initially indicated. And as a result, we are not going to need the 1.30 service. And so this Sunday, we will not hold a 1.30 service. It'll be 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. for our morning worship, and then back again at 6.30 for our evening worship. We're looking forward to that 6.30 time. We haven't uh, done any survey response. We have no idea how many of you may show up. Um, we do want to remind you, just as families, uh, to bring your own blankets and chairs. And uh, we just encourage you and ask you to sit as family units uh, to social distance from one another. Uh, but we're eager to be able to worship both this Sunday morning and this Sunday evening. There's just a couple other uh, updates and reminders. When you come this Sunday morning, we do ask that family units arrive together so you can be seated together. Uh, that will help us as we're seating in the sanctuary. Let me also just uh, remind you and ask you, this is a new process. Uh, everything here is uh, the first time that we're doing it. And just ask that you show grace uh, and patience with our ushers and those who are helping with these services. You know, in, in many ways, uh, there are so many things that are different about this first Sunday, and some of them feel maybe icky, registering for church and having the gathering space roped off and these things. But we're seeking to be wise, we're eager to be back to worship, and, and we look forward to returning more and more uh, to the ministry and time together that we're so grateful for. I want to share a devotion from God's Word this morning, and I want to share a verse from 2 Timothy that I shared with our staff uh, a week or two ago. In 2 Timothy 2.8, we read, Remember Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, the offspring of David as preached in my gospel, for which I am suffering bound with chains as a criminal, but the word of God is not bound. There's two things about this passage that I find so encouraging during this time. First, a reminder that whatever might be happening around us, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. The Son of God, the offspring of David, is preached in the gospel. This is our hope, and this is still true, and it is still our, our rock-solid hope during this time. But then Paul goes on to say you know, he's facing suffering, he's bound in chains, and yet even when he is imprisoned, the gospel is not bound. God is still at work through his word and through the gospel for the good of his people and the growth of his kingdom. And I want to encourage us that as Christians, our goal during this time is to remember that God's word is not bound. It's not restricted in any way by the things that are going on around us. In fact, God will use this time for the growth of his kingdom. And I hope that we as Christians are not focused on just getting this time over with and getting back to normal, but rather seeking to see how God might be using this time for his glory. In my position, I, I hear stories of this, and I want to share with you a number of ways. I, I hear stories of, of another PCA church that just started meeting, who had a family who had never been to church come back with them uh, for their first meeting. I'm aware of another member of a local PCA church who's been holding backyard Bible studies on Sunday afternoons in his neighborhood and had unbelieving families come to his Bible study during this time. Surge, one of our missionary partners, has mentioned that they've seen an uptick in requests for Bibles during this time, as well as an increase in the number of people who have contacted them with an interest in going as missionaries during this time. I'm aware of people who I do not believe are, are Christians who have been tuning into our own live stream here at Westminster. And I continue as I think about our own congregation to firmly believe that God can use this time and will use this time to grow us as a body of Christ in our love and care for one another, to give us growth in how we reach out and love one another, but also to give us growth in what it means to be united and, uh, and together as a congregation, not just because we agree on everything, because we don't all agree on everything, but because we are united in Christ as our Savior. We are brothers and sisters in Him, and I think we will grow as a congregation in this way. So all of these are just examples of the way God's at work. And I pray that we would seek to continue to be part of his work during this different and unexpected time. But even as we remember that God's word is not bound and that God is still at work, even during this time that's different than normal, we also remember that God has made promises to his people that he works through his normal means of grace, through his word, through prayer, through the church, through the preaching of his word, through the ministry to one another. 
And so for us as Christians, the care of our souls is a top priority. And our ability to minister to one another through gathering for worship, through children's Sunday school, youth group, women's Bible study, men's ministry, and these things is a top priority. There's a much greater urgency for us as a church to look to getting back to these ministries than there is an urgency, say, to get back to the gym or to get a haircut. The priority for us isn't just a return to normal. It's a return to worship and to the things that God has promised to use in our lives to draw us nearer to Him. So while there will certainly be a debate about timeline and we seek to do this wisely and prudently, we'd ask that you would pray for us as we look forward to being together again. We look forward to worship this coming Sunday morning, and we look forward to God guiding us as we begin our ministries again and look forward to being together and caring for one another and seeing the Word of God at work in our congregation and in our lives.